Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to World War II In-Depth. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about some sniper myths, because as I have been reviewing sniper rifles, it has come to my attention that there is a lot of misinformation, a lot of confusion, and a whole lot of myths regarding sniper rifles in Call of Duty World War II. Primarily, those myths revolve around the aim assist that you get in the Mountain Division compared to aim assist on sniper rifles in other divisions, and why people like to mix and match snipers outside of their ideal division. On top of that, we're going to be talking about the scoped perk today, ballistic calibration, FMJ, stance proning, idle sway, and a lot of other things. It's going to be a fun episode, and I do hope you enjoy the gameplay as well. I'm popping people with the Iron Sight Car 98, which is incredibly fun, and I'm running it on the Infantry Division for a reason. So, in the Mountain Division, you only get aim assist while holding your breath, and this applies for all sniper rifles. You only get aim assist while you're holding your breath, you don't get it without holding your breath, and there are no exceptions, including the M1903, which I know a lot of people thought was the exception to the rule across the board, which is kind of strange because you would think that you would get aim assist all the time or that it would function normally, but without holding your breath, it roughly functions like a Black Ops 3 sniper rifle. When you do hold your breath, your aim gets steady and you get sticky aim. You get that aim that kind of fights you when you want to pull off target. It kind of gravitates and pulls in toward middle, and it makes it much, much easier to aim. Outside of the Mountain Division, sniper rifles do not have aim assist, except for the Lee Enfield. The Lee Enfield has aim assist on other divisions, and it's on all the time, which is kind of strange. You can't hold your breath in those other divisions, but it's just default on, which I think is why when I was reviewing that episode, I was talking about sometimes it feels great, sometimes I use other divisions, sometimes it feels terrible, I'm having a very difficult time getting a feel for it. Well, that's because when I would pick it up off the ground in infantry or airborne or something, it would have aim assist. However, when I was using it in the mountain division, it would only have aim assist when I was holding my breath, which I didn't do all the time. So kind of a funny weapon there. And there's another exception to this rule, which is the Iron Sight Car 98 gets cross division aim assist. It also gets aim assist in the mountain division, but you can use this on any other division and it makes way more sense to do that. I think that's because when you put the Iron Sight on it, Sledgehammer coded it to just act more like a normal weapon and normal rifle and make it kind of easier to use. So you do get aim assist that way and be because I think that the benefits you get on other divisions are better than mountain, I use it on infantry all the time. This rule set that I've created does include the M1903. It behaves just like the other sniper rifles in that in mountain division, it only gets aim assist when you hold your breath. And yes, it does get aim assist during breath holding. And outside of other divisions, it gets no aim assist whatsoever. I initially thought this one was going to be the exception to the rule because it definitely was in the beta and maybe early in the game it handled funny. But as of now, it behaves just like the Car 98 for the most part. So the aim assist is normal, I guess you could say. These rules are getting complicated. Another thing that I've noticed is that the amount or stickiness of the aim varies slightly from weapon to weapon. Also the zoom on the weapon varies so it makes this kind of difficult. Some weapons are much stickier on their aim assist than others. Some have different uh, ranges, some have different widths around the character's hitbox, and different levels of zoom that affect your aim. So you're gonna have to take your time to master each individual weapon because even the basic aiming mechanics apparently change from gun to gun. Next up, we need to talk about scoped and ballistic calibration. In my previous episode, I recommended running scoped because, at least by the tooltips, it was supposed to do the exact same thing as ballistic calibration. Lo and behold, Sledgehammers decided to make me the fool today because the scoped perk doesn't seem to affect sniper rifles at all. So let's jump into some examples so I can explain what I'm talking about. The sniper rifle on the left is normal, and the one on the right is using the ballistic calibration attachment, and it is plain as day which one is swaying less. The one on the left both sways more and faster, and ballistic calibration keeps you on target much, much better, so that's a good thing. I'm going to be running that all the time. When it comes to comparing normal and scoped, you'll notice that there is basically no difference here. When I watch this, it's a little bit hard for me to watch both at the same time, but it does seem that the scoped perk slows down the idle sway. The overall total movement distance is the same, but the scoped one seems to sway slightly slower, but that benefit is negligible at best. It's difficult for me to even see. Finally, let's compare ballistic calibration and ballistic calibration with scoped, and we see a similar picture here. 
I basically can't tell the difference between these two. They most certainly don't stack, and I don't see that any need whatsoever to run both of them. I can't even tell if Scoped is doing anything at all. So as far as I can tell, Scoped doesn't decrease Sway. It just has little to no effect whatsoever on Sway in the Sniper Rifle class. However, Ballistic Calibration decreases Sway by a lot. It makes these weapons way, way easier to use. So no matter what class you run the Sniper Rifle on, Ballistic Calibration is going to be the attachment of choice. I did do some additional testing to find out that Ballistic Calibration and Scoped don't stack, but more importantly, Ballistic Calibration works with ACOGs and Iron Sights too. So if you're sniping with ACOG, or if you're using the Iron Sights on the Car 98, Ballistic Calibration will reduce the idle sway on those sights, and again, still a fantastic uh, attachment. So pretty much no matter what you're sniping with, you want to have Ballistic Calibration on it because it significantly increases your accuracy across the board, even if you're using Iron Sights. Next up, we're getting to simpler myths. Crouching or proning will reduce your idle sway. If you've just picked a sniper up off the ground, if you don't want to do these things, if you want to play more conservatively, just crouching or especially proning will take your idle sway down to almost zero. And last up today, FMJ will help you get more collaterals. It increases the penetration level of your bullet, which means it increases the damage that that bullet will do on the other side of a wall. And that means that it's easier to shoot through bodies and deal your maximum damage through multiple bodies. And there is a damage reduction when you shoot through a single body. The bodies do decrease damage kind of like light walls. And finally, rapid fire is only about 7% bonus to your fire rate. When it comes to sniper rifles, that's going to take it from like... 50 RPM to like 53 RPM. You'll probably never notice the difference, and I don't think that it's a very good attachment to run. Guys, that's all for this in-depth episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.